Okay, so I'm actually I'm actually still on my Raspberry Pi computer. I for this video we're gonna show you how to optimize Blender to run stuff at 60 FPS and also have a good uh, resolution along with it. The first thing that we're gonna want to do to make Blender run better and not use too much of that not use too much of the CPU. Uh, we want OpenGL activated. Yeah, this thing has OpenGL. It doesn't run 100% great, but even still. So we're gonna bring up our little Raspberry Pi command prompt thing. And I'm looking at the commands right now. Okay, we want to type in sudo raspi dash config okay so I want to go down to advanced options and we want to go to GL driver Now, I don't know for sure what full or fake means, but we're going to go full. There we go. It's enabled. And we're going to do a quick restart by going down to finish. Would you like to reboot? Yes. Okay, through the magic of editing, I... I basically cut all the reboot bits, except for uh, putting in a password, which, by the way, magical editing coming right up. Magical. Now, let's bring Blender back up. Okay, now I'm moving around and stuff. Excuse me. So, yeah. Remember how it jumped last time with all the stuff? Now I move around. Look at that. It's only using 6%, between 2 to 6% of the CPU just to move around. That's a good thing. But another side effects that another side effect that I want noted here is that you know, let's change the first let's change this to game engine. Let's bring up the game logic editor. Oh, there it goes. Yep, there's the flickering. Don't worry about that too much. Some of, some of that actually goes away when you click on certain boxes like this. And anyway, so for this demonstration, we're actually going to make this cube move. So let's let's do that. Oh, another side effect: if we hit zero on the number pad. Switch to camera view, but it's all blacked out. So we we just want to be able to see this. So let's get this moving. Uh, uh, no, we don't want the mouse. We don't want the mouse. Actually, we want the keyboard, and we want W. And we want motion. And we're going to make this go this way on the y-axis. Let's type in 0 0.10. Oh, we're losing focus. Let's get some focus back in. Here we go. Okay, so we have that set. <clears throat> uh, we're also going to make this move backwards, too. So let's minimize these. We're going to have to minimize this one, but still. So let's bring in another one of these. Uh, keyboard. Going to move backwards with S. <clears throat> Oh, 
motion. And right here, we want to type in minus 0 0.10. get this connected and we'll minimize this because we don't need to see any of that and there's one more thing that we need to do and this further <coughs> excuse me this further optimizes the 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 game so down here we, where we can set resolutions and stuff for the embedded player and the standalone player. Uh, you can't really do anything here because if we if we hit play right now, actually before we do that, let's tab out of that and go up to game and show frame rate and profile. Uh, Actually, let's see if that worked at all. Yes, it did. Okay, yeah, this up here. See, it's running, it's barely trying to reach 30 FPS. You have all this other... <clears throat> oh, and escape. So, so yeah, 30 FPS right there even while the the cube was moving. So so here's how so here's how you basically fix the problem. Down here on the standalone player, you see it has a set resolution and it would make that it would make the screen a box. We actually don't want that. Sure, we want full screen, but we also want desktop to be checked off as well. The full screen is self-explanatory. You, play, you, you start the standalone player and it'll uh, start it in full screen. But also, we want to check off desktop because desktop, it takes the information from the current desktop resolution and basically runs the game with those settings. So, with these two checked off, and we have 60 FPS. Uh, set let's hit the stand let's hit this and see what happens okay we're in full screen and 60 fps it dips a little bit but hey oh, and there are and there are occasional flashes too but hey Okay, you can't see it through through this image, but uh, even still, yeah, 60 FPS. And from from looking over the phone, it looks great. It looks the 60 FPS thing is holding great on my monitor. And this is on the Raspberry Pi three. Yeah, this tiny device right here is running this in 60 FPS. Now, granted, this is just a cube, and it doesn't have too many vertices. And I am going to push this even further with another project that I'm working on. It's a uh, it's an FPS game. But yeah, we uh, that's, so that's basically how you can optimize that for Raspberry Pi 3. I'm, I am hoping that... Hmm... Actually, in this video, since I'm not using too much time here, um, there's a publishing thing right there. Okay, let's uh, publish output. Okay, I'm gonna quickly uh, find the. I'm gonna quickly name this project and uh, publish it, so that we can. Uh, uh, test it fully. So, be right back. Okay, so I did a little test publish 
I have my folder here that says game test. And let's test it. This, this file, test mode is an executable. Do you want to execute it? Yes. Okay, let's take a look here. Oh, still flashes a bit. And it still runs at 60. Now, I don't know how to fix the flashing bit. I'm hoping that... What I'm really trying to do is start a conversation here on YouTube. At, oh. Okay. <laughs> at a moment, apparently uh, the game crashed my Raspberry Pi computer and I had to restart. But I just tested it right now. And... Seems to run good. Okay, you still can't see that it's running at 60, but, uh... Yeah, we still have flashes. Okay, I'm gonna press this again and see what happens. Okay. So there is an occasional crash, and you will have to restart your Raspberry Pi computer, but, uh... But, yeah, there's... There's, uh, there's your optimization, there's... Uh, I can't, I can't get the newer version of, uh, Blender. So, again, it was Blender version 2.72. But I'm going to be demonstrating the other two videos on, uh, Blender version 2.79. So, see you later.